Hi everyone, my name is Clinton Crumpler, and I'm here today to give you a tutorial on how to capture and use 360 screenshots from Unreal Engine. There's been a lot of talk and support for 360 images recently, and now they're supported on such sites such as ArtStation and other visual social platforms. For those who haven't looked too much into it, they're essentially a full 360 view from one perspective in your scene. With these views, the viewer can get a really interesting, immersive look at your artwork and get in closer to explore the nooks and crannies of all the work you put into it. In this particular tutorial, we'll go through the traditional steps of using the native Unreal setup with the Scene Capture Cube, and then we'll use a second method with an NVIDIA Ansel plugin for Unreal 4. Throughout this demo, I'll be using my latest scene that I've created in Unreal, the CCA Subway Train. This scene is available for purchase on my cube brush for all those who are interested, as well as many other environments for commercial or educational use. Let's go ahead and hop right in and get started. Now with my scene open, let's talk a little bit about the first method we'll be using. Unreal naturally has a way to capture 360 screenshots. It was originally created and used for creating cube maps to simulate reflections in the scene. While this process does work to capture the scene, there are a few issues involved. First, as you'll notice with my example that I'll be showing today, Unreal's version is unable to capture all the post-process settings correctly within the image captured. Also, the size of the image capture is limited, as it was not initially intended for high-resolution screen captures. Let's go ahead and continue on so you can see the results firsthand. So the first step we're going to do is with your scene open, we're going to navigate to the place mode, which is here, and we're going to select our scene capture cube actor. So we want to search for scene capture cube. So we're going to go ahead and drag this out here. And i got to hit G to make sure I'm in game mode. So you can see here, here's my scene capture cube actor. I'm going to go ahead and place him right there. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to navigate to my content browser here. So I'm going to go ahead and select my content browser. And I'm going to navigate to just materials here so you can get an idea of where you would place it. Uh, you can place it really anywhere, but I'm just going to place it in my materials folder for right now. And I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to materials and textures and I want to select cube render target. And I'm going to name this render target for RT and I'm going to name this, uh, let's see, let's name it capture 01. So I've named that. I'm going to go ahead and save it. Right click and save. Now with this selected in my content browser, I'm going to go ahead and move this over here. I have this selected in my content browser. I have this selected here. So I'm going to go over here to the options for this, and it says texture target. So what I need to do with this selected here, I'm going to go ahead and just select the use asset from the content browser. And that's going to place that RT capture 01 there. And you can already see it's updated here. So if I roll over here, now you can see it's actually updated the texture already here to show what it's actually capturing from this location in the scene. As you can see, that didn't take too much work, and we're already most of the way there. So let's go ahead and double click our cube render target here. And we can see what it's actually capturing here in real time. So this is the location right here under texture render target cube. We can increase the size of the texture. So we can say 2048 or even 496. But as you can see, when I hit in 4096, it maximizes it to 2048. So this is where we talked about before, where it can only get so big because it, it wasn't originally designed or intended to get but so big for using this kind of texture because it was meant to be a uh, cube map. So with that selected, we can go ahead and say we want the max size to be 2048 because we want to get it as big as possible. And then you can choose if you want HDR on or not. So I'm going to go ahead and save that, close it out. So now we can go here and select our camera actor here which is capturing the scene, and we can move this around the scene anywhere we want to recapture our scene. So if we say we move it down here, and we go here and we take a look at our texture again, you can see it's updated this texture to reflect where it's been changed or placed in the scene. So I can say save that, and now we can keep that as our new location. So you can see it's going to get a little sluggish too, so keep an eye on that, the bigger that texture is, because it has to uh, constantly recapture that texture every frame. Now you can disable that function from capturing every frame by going here with this, the camera actor selected, and just go turn off capture every frame. So now it'll just capture it once, save it to memory, and it won't have to reload every time when this thing is moved. 
Um, so another thing you can do is capture on movement. So you can only captures when it's being moved. So there's a few options here to do to control that so that it makes it a little less buggy or hassle free when you're just moving this around to find a good place uh, so you can kind of find that perfect capture that you're after. One of the last things I want to talk about before exporting our texture so that we can edit in Photoshop is just a few options down here. As I said before, you can't capture the perfect post process that you've actually put into your scene. So right now you can see the difference between this kind of green looking post process I have here in my actual scene compared to the actual uh, view that you have here from the captured scene. So it's missing that post process color effect that I've done. But it is able to get other effects. So if you can see here with this selected, I can go to the options from the details panel to show general flags. And this is a list of all the features that it is able to capture without issue so that you can kind of check on or off things that you might want to capture. So if you don't have a lot of post processing your scene, you might be able to get away with just using this because you don't necessarily need those extra post process looks within your final capture. So just kind of take a look at this and see if these are all the things you're using your post process, then it'll be able to capture it perfectly. Otherwise, you might need to go with method two, which we'll be talking about momentarily. So now that we've done everything here, we can go ahead and export our HDR image to edit and finalize in Photoshop by selecting and right clicking the cube render target. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to asset options and I'm going to go to export. It's going to bring up this menu here. So I'm going to go ahead to desktop and I'm going to go ahead and say I'm going to name this render target capture underscore zero one. It's going to go ahead and export that for me. Now we can go ahead and edit this texture in Photoshop. In Photoshop, we want to edit the image to be usable in other applications. For instance, if you're uploading this to ArtStation, you'll need to convert it into a JPEG file format. When the image comes into Photoshop, it comes in as default at a 32-bit image. So you can see here, we go to Image, Mode, you can see it's at 32-bit currently. This type of image cannot be saved as a .jpeg. And so we're going to go ahead and need to change it to an 8-bit image. So we're going to go ahead and select 8-bit image. And it's going to come up with a secondary menu here to be for HDR toning. So I find that it, when it starts with the local adaptation, you can see when I turn preview on or off, it's a big difference between the initial and the change between local adaptation. So I find the less, least change comes when I change it to exposure and gamma. And you can see here, now when I switch between the two, there's little to no difference. So we're going to go ahead and say OK to that. Now I'm happy to say we can go ahead and say File, Save As, and we can save our image as a JPEG. So let's go ahead and save it as RT underscore Capture 01. It's going to come up with this next option. And one last thing I'd like to mention is that ArtStation, for their upload of the 360 panorama view, which you'll be using your 360 screenshot for, they don't let you go above 10 megabytes, or also, and also they recommend using the size of 8192 by 4096. So because we didn't get our image that big, that's okay. But you just want to keep an eye on this preview size of how big the file is going to be. So if, you, if I knock it all the way up to full quality, it's still below that 10 megabyte. So it's okay in this case. But later when we use the secondary uh, kind of way of going about it with the Ansel viewer, you will be able to get above the 10 megabyte pretty quickly. So that's just something to note when saving your file to make sure it's the correct file size and also the correct size. So I'm going to go ahead and say OK and finalize the save. So that's it. Super simple to get your first 360 shot out of Unreal. Now let's move on to the Ansel plugin and go through that solution number two. For the next step, we're going to be doing the NVIDIA Ansel plugin, which is a super handy tool for getting great screenshots with all the post process included at much larger sizes than the first method we talked about. With this plugin, it takes us a little bit more work to get it set up and going, but after a few steps, you'll be taking 360 screenshots in no time. Let's go ahead and get started. First thing we're going to do is back in Unreal, we're going to go ahead and navigate to the top menu and choose Settings, and we're going to go ahead to go to Plugins. Now it's going to open this menu here. And we're going to want to enable the NVIDIA Ansel plugin. So let's go ahead and search for Ansel. So you can see it comes up, and it looks like this. And all you're going to want to do is click this Enable feature. And as soon as you click this, it's going to give you the option. It's going to tell you you need to restart your editor if you didn't already have it enabled. Go ahead and allow it to restart and make sure you saved everything before enabling this feature. Because as soon as you do, it's going to close down the editor for a restart and then restart right back where you left off. 
Now, I wish at this point that all you had to do was make your changes in Unreal, but there's a few things you actually have to do on your computer externally of Unreal to get this going. So you're going to want to navigate to your file explorer, and you're going to want to go to C, Program Files, NVIDIA Corporation, Anzil Tools. And then we're going to want to run the NV Camera Configuration EXE. So we're going to double click this, and you're going to go ahead and say yes to allow it. That's going to bring up this option here for the Anzil Configuration Utility. Now there's only a few options here in this menu that we actually want to make sure we change or update for this to work properly. The first is you want to make sure that you set your directory for where your shots and also where your snapshots are going to go. So this one is for film and this one is for uh, any kind of uh, your actual images. So you're going to want to want to set both of them to wherever you want your directory or your computer to be. You can be your desktop, it can be a special directory in your documents, wherever you think it best to save your images as you capture them. Then you're going to want to also make sure you go down to the bottom and you want to make sure that NV camera is currently and you want to make sure it is enabled. And after you have both of those options set up, you can go ahead and say save to confirm the options. Now the next step is a bit technical. So we're going to click on our Windows icon here and we're going to go ahead and say command prompt. And that's going to bring up this black window here. And you're just going to want to paste this information in here. So I'm going to paste it. And I'll also make sure I put this in big letters so you can see it a little bit easier and closer uh, in the actual video. So basically what this is doing is basically saying use that tool and enable it so that it can be used in Unreal while you're using Unreal. So we're going to go ahead and hit enter. And now that it's confirmed, we can go ahead and exit out of here. Now with all of that completed, we can go ahead back into the Unreal Engine and go to the top menu here where it says play. And we want to click the little drop down beside it. And we want to make sure we click on standalone game. Now it's going to take a second, it's going to save it, and then it's going to load another window that's going to be a standalone version of our game. Give that a second to load here. And here we are. So we're inside of our actual scene here, so we can walk around a little bit, see everything. And we're going to actually place ourselves where we want to take our 360 camera screenshot. So now that we're in our location, like say if we want to move here, and we want to take our screenshot from here for our 360 view from this point within the scene, all we need to do is hold, hold down and click the Alt F2 key. And you can see that brought up a little different menu that kind of the UI that's laid over the top to the left with the Ansel options. But because I hit the F2 key in Unreal, F2 turns it to unlit mode. So to get back simply to our lip mode, all we hit down is the F3 key and it'll take us back to our regular viewing mode. So now from here we can actually select the options that will control the look of our final render that we do for our 360 view. So the first thing we want to want to do is change the capture type to 360 view. So with that set up we can also change the field of view. So let's say we want to do something around the lines of 50. I find that I typically stay between 45 and 65 for the best kind of view that's least distorted. And then if the, the actual viewer wants to pull back a little bit within the actual viewer in, say, uh, on ArtStation or other such viewing program, they can do it there. But this at least takes the screenshot from this perspective. Then also we're going to want to turn the screenshot up. Now I like to go ahead and just max it out because I know I want to get as high a resolution as possible. And remember we talked about before what resolution that ArtStation prefers is 8192 by 4096, which is exactly the highest resolution that you can get out of this Anzil viewer, which works out perfectly. Now it's going to shoot out a one gigabyte file, so we'll need to cut down the file size later on to make it usable in a program such as ArtStation or otherwise. But for now, this will work. So we're going to go ahead down to here, and we're just going to go ahead and click Snap. So it's going to fly through all the images and perspective of your scene within a 360 view of where you initially put your camera. So I'm going to give this a moment to complete. It should take about anywhere from 30 to 60 seconds, depending on how big you've actually uh, made your resolution. Since I've made it the biggest, this is probably going to take just a second. To save you a little bit of time, I'll speed this section up. Perfect. So now we're all done. So I'm going to go ahead and click down here on done. 
And I'm going to go ahead and hit the Windows key to exit out of this standalone mode and go ahead and exit out. Now that the Ansel plugin has exported the image to the original directory that we set, we can go ahead and open up in Photoshop to see the results. If you go to Image, Mode, and you can already see that it's already been set to 8-bit naturally. Also, it's already naturally saved the image as a JPEG file format, which is great. But there's a one last thing we'll have to edit to make sure it's usable in Photoshop. So as we said, the image size is perfectly correct. If you go to Image, let me go to Image Size, it's 8192 by 4096, which is great. But we're going to go ahead and need to have a smaller file size to actually save it onto ArtStation. So we're going to go to Save As, and we're just going to name it underscore small, just to save an alternate version of this. So we're going to go ahead and override it. And you, all you need to do is change it from the initial file size. So the initial file size right now is 15.6 megabytes. We're going to change it to 11, the quality of 11. And that's going to knock it down to 8.8 .8 megabytes. And we're going to go ahead and say OK. And now that we've saved it, it's the correct size, the correct format, and it's ready to go to be uploaded. Now that we've gone through both methods, we can see that they both produce very similar results with a few changes here and there. The best method depends on your post-processing and what resolution you want your final output to be at. Now you can upload your 360 shots to multiple outlets to display your work. Thanks for watching! And to view more of my work, check out my website at www.clintoncrumpler.com.